Hi, and welcome to another episode of Starship Gaming. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell if you want notifications of when we make more awesome videos. Now let's jump right into today's topic. We are going to discuss the video game, I should say specifically the Sony PlayStation or PS1 video game. As you know, um, for the past month we've been reviewing PS1 games and we will continue to through May. <laughs> Uh, Warpath Jurassic Park. So this was a pretty strange game. Um, I actually remember uh, very faintly seeing this in Blockbuster Video and thinking, huh, I wonder what that one's like. I, I had no clue for years, and then eventually, um, you know, I got to play it. But before we talk about, you know, the game as a whole, let me explain the late, eh, mid to late 90s. See, in the mid to late 90s, um, it was currently going through the, what we call the Mortal Kombat phase, or the fighting game phase. You had Mortal Kombat, of course, that was the leader of the pack, and then, of course, you had Street Fighter 2, which had a ton of different ports. Um, and then you had some, quite a few different things. Uh, for example, another PlayStation 1 title that came out around... 1999 when Warpath came out, um, Tobal number one, uh, and then of course on Sega you had like Virtua Fighter and you know stuff like that. Uh, of course there was one game that was released, um, I believe it was 1994. Um, it was called Primal Rage, and that was a big hit for about two years after it came out. In fact, they got ports to several different systems and even before Primal Rage you had another dinosaur fighting game that came out in 1992 called Dino Rex which was honestly I've gotten a chance to play it it's kind of strange <laughs> but um, nevertheless you see where we're going here Warpath Jurassic Park was a dinosaur fighting game now, when this game came out in 1999, it was um, developed by DreamWorks and released by Electronic Arts, or I should say DreamWorks Interactive um, developed it. Um, there was very little promotion for this game, or at least as far as I know, um, outside of just, you know, your typical, I believe it had a ad and maybe gaming publications of the day, and, uh, you know... Um, for a few months before and probably a few months after. But other than that, you know, in a trailer, of course, um, there really wasn't very much information about it. And it just kind of was dead on arrival when it released. Uh, I'm sorry, it was Black Ops Entertainment who developed it. It was um, co-published by DreamWorks Interactive and Electronic Arts. I had to <laughs> check myself there. Sorry about that. In the game, there are several dinosaurs you can play as. Um, let me just name them off here. The Ancrocaphosaurus, the Ankylosaurus, the Giganotosaurus, the Megaraptor, which... Um, story about the Megaraptor... Um, and this is kind of like a behind-the-scenes thing. The Megaraptor was originally supposed to be the main antagonist dinosaur of the Lost World Jurassic Park, but it was cut for whatever reason. However, in Trespasser, uh, another Jurassic Park game released a year before Warpath, the Megaraptor is the final boss of that game. Then we have the Stiggy Moloch, which I believe at the time... Um, it was just, it was a recent discovery when this game came out that the Stiggy Moloch and the Pachycephalosaurus, uh, it was long believed, and it, it, there's a lot of debate on it, that um, the Pachycephalosaurus and the Stiggy Moloch were the same species, which a lot of people believe that today. They believe that, and, it, you know, it, it's a real, real weird thing that the uh, Pachycephalosaurus was the juvenile and that the adult version was what is known as Sticky Moloch. There's a lot of debate about that. We're not going to get into that because that's a totally different thing from what we're talking about. But I just thought that was an interesting little blurb to pull up. And you can play as the Styracosaurus, 
uh, the Suchomimus, and of course the Tyrannosaurus rex. Oh, Rexy. And of course you can unlock more dinosaurs like um, Carcharodontosaurus, um, Albertosaurus, uh, of course Pachycephalosaurus, Triceratops, Spinosaurus, which the Spinosaurus in this game is, it predates um, Jurassic Park 3. So this was 99, Jurassic Park 3 came out in 2001. So the Spinosaurus in this game has a different design than its 2001 counterpart. In fact, the Spinosaurus that's featured in this game is modeled after the Kenner toy um, that was released for the Jurassic Park toy line uh, back around when the first movie came out. Now, and they also released one around the time the Lost World Jurassic Park came out, I believe. And of course, last but not least, uh, I'm probably going to get this wrong, <laughs> Cryolophosaurus. That may have been right. I don't know. <laughs> so basically, there's different arenas that you can fight in, and they're all modeled after um, locales or inspired by locales uh, from what was then the first two movies, um, Jurassic Park and the Lost World Jurassic Park. And of course, there really is no story mode. You just pick a dinosaur and you just play through. And as you play as each dinosaur, if you play through all of them, you start unlocking more dinosaurs. Of course, after the game came out, um, around late 99, early 2000, it didn't really get very good reviews from publications. In fact, most of them, uh, out of a score of 10, gave it 4 out of 10 or, you know depending on what their scale was at the time, but it was really unfavorable. A lot of the reviews, they basically talked about the AI in the game being bad, um, but they did praise the graphics. That's that's the good thing. <laughs> it actually, to be honest, it did have pretty good graphics um, for the time it came out. And some reviewers of the time even went so far to call it, bluntly, a Primal Rage ripoff, which, when you really think about it, it kind of is but also kind of isn't i mean have you ever played primal rage or at least read some of the read some of the stories about primal rage that is just a really weird plot for a video game <laughs> so now it is time for me to review it on a scale of one to five one being the worst five being the best i give this game a three um why do i give it a three well let me start with the good stuff the graphics in the game are very good and for its novelty of being a dinosaur fighting game which it has the distinction of being one of the few from the 90s we're not going to count any of the, the, the modern day ones we're going from uh, 19 we're going to say 2000 and before <laughs> uh, it has the novelty and the distinction of being a dinosaur fighting game now Look at the negative aspect, uh, the a negative aspects of it. Um, the uh, AI, of course, they were right. It's kind of poor. Uh, hit detection, um, yeah, it's hit and miss, <laughs> literally. Um, but other than that, uh, it's a decent game that you can sit down and play in an afternoon. It's something that you wouldn't want to play for more than a week because, quite honestly, I tried playing it for more than a week. It does get boring. But uh, you could actually beat the whole game, maybe in an evening if you really try. You could probably beat the entire thing in about three or four hours. Of course, that depends on your skills. <laughs> so I say this is a game you'll only want to play if you're a Jurassic Park fan or you're a fan of dinosaurs in general. It's not, I mean, it's enjoyable. It is challenging depending on your difficulty level. Um, but at the end of the day, it's just basically Street Fighter with dinosaurs. Or, to put it more bluntly, I would actually go so far to call it a <laughs> somewhat blatant ripoff of the uh, of Primal Rage, in a way. Uh, so, there you go. It's not a good game, but it's not a bad game either. Um, of course, the prices of this game are a little ridiculous. If you go hunting for a copy, you could get them loose disc as low as... Uh, $15, and I've seen some copies go all the way up to $40, $45. Uh, I actually got, ended up with a copy of about a year or two ago. Um, I've played it before, but I didn't own a copy. 
I ended up with a copy about a year or two ago, and I traded it to a guy. I believe he wanted 25 trade credit for it, so I gave him 25 trade credit, which that's a pretty decent, you know, amount for a game. Of course, I wanted to complete my Jurassic Park collection for PS1, so yeah, it was worth it. So, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell if you want notifications of when we release more awesome videos. And until next time, I will see ya.